Hello and welcome to this intro to Events.Cloud. In this recording, I'll be showing you some of the features available in the cloud and also how to create and access a cluster. When you first log into the cloud, you'll see you're presented with a number of organizations that are available to you. If we go into the Events or Advocacy organization, we'll see there are a list of projects. On the left hand side, we have Access Control. Here you can control who can see your organization. Here we have a list of members, the ability to invite new members, groups which control what users can do, roles and policies will be available soon, as will identity sources, which will allow you to integrate with third party providers such as Off0 or Identity Server if you wish to control access via those. Finally, we have settings which allows us to force multi-factor authentication on our users and also limit the invites to a given domain so you don't accidentally invite somebody outside your organization. So if we go back to a project view, we can now create a new project. We will call it test project. And I'll add myself as the administrator and create it. Once in the project view, you can see there are a number of options on the left hand side. There's clusters, backups, events console, networks, peerings, and settings. Now for security reasons, we don't expose a public IP address of our clusters. So in order to get access to them, you first have to create a new network within the cloud and then peer that network to your own infrastructure network. So let's go ahead and create a new network. I'll give it a name of test network. Choose a provider of AWS and a region of EU West 2. Finally, I'll give it a CIDR block and create it. Now, once the network becomes available, we can go ahead and create a new pairing. I'll give it a name of test pairing. Choose a network I want to peer. And then I have to provide it with some AWS account details. You can get these details from the AWS console. They are the account ID, the VPC ID, and finally the peer address space. and then create a pairing. Once a pairing reaches the initiated status, you can then go back to the AWS console and accept a pairing from the other side. Once you've accepted the pairing, you then just have to add a new route to the tables, giving it the original CIDR block. And the peer connection ID. Once this has been added, we can then go back to the console and wait for the pairing to be completed. Now that the period is active, we can go ahead and create our first cluster. First, we'll give it a name of test cluster and choose a provider of AWS. Now we're presented with a number of options. The first is a server version of which 20.6 is available, but as we release more in the future, we will add those to the cloud. Next is projections of which we can choose off systems projections only or system and user projections. We'll choose off for now. Then there's topology, of which we offer a single node or a free node cluster. We'll choose single for now. And then there is a VM size. We have everything from an F1, which is a two core, one gigabyte memories, through to an M128, which is a 32 core, 128 gigabyte memory. We'll choose an F1. Next is storage, 
We can leave this at eight gigabytes because we have the ability to resize later and we choose a network that we created earlier. Finally, at the bottom, we have an indicative cost. This is how much we expect the cluster to cost you on a monthly basis. So let's create it. Now that the cluster is active, there are a number of things you can do. Firstly, you can create a backup where we can introduce the cluster description or a date timestamp into the name. We can also increase the size of the disk. So we'll change this from eight gigabytes to 10 gigabytes. And as you can see, the amount you'll be charged per month changes. Finally, once a backup has been created, you can either choose to restore it back to the existing cluster or to a new cluster, should you wish to take a snapshot of production. We'll leave all the rest of the options the same and create it. Finally, there's one more thing I want to draw your attention to, which is the events console. This is where you'll get notifications of things like high CPU usage, or if you're running out of disk space. There'll also be the ability to integrate this with third party providers, such as PagerDuty. Should you wish to get notified by phone, you've got the option to do so. And that's about it. Next, I want to show you how to connect to the cluster.